You are the last man in the world whom I could ever marry. Do you think that any consideration would tempt me? Your arrogance, your conceit, and your selfish disdain for the feelings of others. My opinion of you was decided when I heard Mr. Wickham's story of your dealings with him. Well, at least in that I may defend myself. Could you expect me to rejoice in the inferiority of your connections? To congratulate myself on the hope of relations whose condition in life is so decidedly below my own? You are mistaken, Mr. Darcy. The mode of your declaration merely spared me the concern I might have felt in refusing you had you behaved in a more gentlemanlike manner. Who's there, Miss Willie? Darcy, we've quite despaired of... Is that my nephew? Where have you been? Let him come in and explain himself. No. You'll forgive me. You'll forgive me. Darcy, you were unwell? No, I'm very well, thank you, but I have a pressing matter of business. You'll forgive me. Make my apologies to Lady Catherine Fitzwilliam. Miss Elizabeth Bennett. Be not alarmed, madam, on receiving this letter, that it contain any repetition of those sentiments or renewal of those offers which were, this evening, so disgusting to you. But I must be allowed to defend myself against the charges laid at my door in particular those relating to Mr. Wickham, which, if true, would indeed be grievous, but are wholly without foundation and which I can only refute by laying before you his connection with my family. Mr. Wickham is the son of a very respectable man who had the management of our family estates and my own father was fond of him and held him in high esteem. We played together as boys. After his father's early death, my father supported him at school and afterwards at Cambridge, and hoped he would make the church his profession. But by then, George Wickham's habits were as dissolute as his manners were engaging. My own excellent father died five years ago. And his attachment to Mr. Wickham was to the last so steady that he desired that a valuable family living might be his as soon as it was vacant. Mr. Wickham declined any interest in the church as a career, but requested and was granted the sum of 3,000 pounds instead of the living. He expressed an intention of studying the law. I wished rather than believed him to be sincere. Thank you. 